Luke back again for another DraftKings NFL video here for week two in the NFL season. What we're going to be doing here is going over our top six value picks for the slate. So some of the guys that are going to save you some salary, allow you to spend up on a few other positions for your roster. And not only do these players have high floors, very high projections this week, I also expect them to have very high ceilings and potential blow up performances as well. So definitely going to go through some of the guys with potential there, some of the guys we could stack together as well. And overall, we're looking for some of the safe targets in good game environments where there's going to be a lot of plays, a lot of offense and scoring from each side of the game, but also games with good matchups and defenses that can be exploited. So again, these players are going to be who I'm targeting further down the board. And without further delay, let's hop into the picks for this week. Taking off the value picks with Teddy Bridgewater, quarterback for the Denver Broncos. He's only $5,400 this week, and I really like stacking up a lot of options on this Denver offense. First and foremost, it starts with the defense that they're playing against, the Jacksonville Jaguars, who got absolutely torched in week one by the Houston Texans. So obviously, Teddy Bridgewater played for Carolina last year, was very consistent, was consistent enough to have three top 25 wide receivers on the same offense, which is the first time we've had that happen for quite some time. Actually, I think the first time we've ever had that in recorded history in terms of a fan football season. So as a result, I'm looking for him to continue that consistency even over here on the West Coast with the Denver Broncos. Jerry Judy ended up going down in week one, which isn't great for his prospects, but they still have Cortland Sutton out there, Noah Fant, Tim Patrick, all those guys I expect to have a very big impact in this game. So I like stacking up those options on that team because they're all very cheap. They all have very high upside as well. Again, we saw the Houston Texans go for over 400 yards of total offense there in week one. So again, I like the consistency from somebody like Teddy Bridgewater. I also like the potential given that they're facing such a bad defense. So Tim Patrick's an option for stacking right there. Noah Fant, like I mentioned before, or even Cortland Sutton. At number five, we have Chase Edmonds. So running back for the Arizona Cardinals, he's 4,900 bucks. And this is my favorite matchup of the entire slate. So you had the Minnesota Vikings going against the Arizona Cardinals. Two high-powered offenses, offenses that run a ton of plays, play with some pace as well. And if you guys saw my core plays video, you know how high I am on this game. I expect both sides to put up plenty of production. And if week one is any indication of how the Cardinals plan on using Chase Edmonds, Edmonds specifically, we know he's going to have a significant significant role in that production. So on top of getting 12 carries in week one, Edmonds was targeted out of the backfield quite often. We saw him produce big time out of the backfield last year for Arizona, had some 50-yard touchdown catches, some games with seven or eight grabs as well. I really like that potential against a Minnesota defense that really hasn't looked good to this point. At number four, we have a guy at the minimum price tag in terms of wide receiver. Um, he has a guy going down ahead of him. That's going to be Anthony Schwartz. Um, Donovan Peoples-Jones is going to take his place for the Cleveland Browns. And at just $3,000, I only have him projected for just over 10 points, 10 and three quarters points. Um, but he really doesn't have to do that much to pay off that price tag. We know there's a blowout expected in Houston. We know that Cleveland's expected to win by quite a few points. So Jones not only could get a lot of that production as he's likely to start this game, he could also get run down the stretch in garbage time. So I really like his potential right here. Again, that Houston defense is expected to be one of the worst in the entire league. Um, so look for a potential flyer in Donovan Peoples-Jones. At number three, we have A.J. Green, another guy from that Arizona-Minnesota game. Um, he's $3,700, and I have him projected for 13 and a half fantasy points right now. Again, he's serving as the number two wide receiver for the Cardinals right now. Um, you have Christian Kirk at number three, and obviously Hopkins as the number one guy out there. But I really like Green's potential in terms of red zone targets. So he's going to have a good matchup against the Vikings corners that aren't very tall in stature. Obviously, Hopkins is going to have a similar advantage, if not a bigger advantage, in terms of his frame. But I expect them to double him in the red zone as a result. You know, they're going to understand that that's an issue, um, that they're going to have to put extra bodies on Hopkins to kind of contain him. But as a result, AJ Green's going to get single coverage. He provides a very, very similar matchup in terms of his size. So I really like that potential in that high scoring affair. At number two, we have James O'Shaughnessy. And if you're a hardcore DFS player, especially with the NFL, you're going to be all over O'Shaughnessy here this week. He's only $2,700 playing in that game against the Denver Broncos I mentioned before. He's not going to break the slate or anything like that. I haven't projected for nine and a half fantasy points right now, but he's only 2,700 bucks, guys. That's cheaper than the minimum price at wide receiver. And he's somebody who saw 100% of snaps for the Jaguars in week one and also saw a ton of targets, was getting looks left and right from Trevor Lawrence, was kind of used as a safety blanket throughout the game. And in a game I expect to eclipse 50 in terms of over-under, targeting him at just $27 is a no-brainer, right? Obviously, you can 
spend up for something like Darren Waller or George Kittle at that position. If you guys look at my core plays videos, those are where I have at one and two respectively. But James O'Shaughnessy, you're getting $5,000 worth of change. I mean, that's that's huge. You can create a chief stack with somebody like O'Shaughnessy. You can go to something like a Buffalo Bills stack with Josh Allen, um, Stephon Diggs, that kind of thing. Um, he just opens up so many possibilities. So that's why he comes in at number two. I think he's a very solid floor play in here in week two. And at number one, we have KJ Os Osborne. And if you guys saw my core plays video, you knew this was coming. He's 3,300 bucks. So $300 above the minimum at wide receiver in that really good matchup against the Arizona Cardinals. And he had the most targets of anyone week one for the Minnesota Vikings. Yes, Adam Thielen, who scored two touchdowns, had a huge game, had less targets than Osborne. Same thing with Justin Jefferson, who had over 100 yards receiving. So somebody is going to get plenty of opportunities in this offense. And a lot of that's because of the talent around him. Obviously, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, better wide receivers to this point of their career, but are getting a lot more attention. So Osborne's getting the slot, slot corners, typically, it's typically even being covered by safeties on his own at some point so that's why we've seen so much upside from him and against a weak defense like the cardinals i expect that to continue so i expect him to go out there get a touchdown potentially even two and could shatter that 14.5 point projection so gets you a ton of salary down there it's only 600 dollars more than o'shaughnessy but i definitely think he gives you a higher ceiling that's all I've got for my value plays for this week, guys. Let me know in the comments who your favorite value play is for this slate. I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Maybe it's somebody I mentioned in the video. Maybe it's somebody that's even a sleeper pick I haven't considered. Would love to hear what you guys have to think, and let's get some debate down in the comments. As always, I really appreciate you guys for watching the video. Um, if you guys haven't liked and subscribed already, make sure you go ahead and do so. I just wanted to remind you guys that on Sunday, we're going to have a live stream from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. going over any of the injuries, some game theory notes, my player poll, all of that good stuff for the weekend slate. So make sure to stop by while you guys are making your lineups. We're going to make a few on stream as well. So it'll be a good time. We'll make sure that you guys are completely updated for those one o'clock games and we'll get on out of there to make some money on DFS. So without further delay though, guys, good luck with any lineups that you're putting in. And I hope to see a bunch of you on Sunday for that live stream. See ya.